Morning, folks. We've got the 2022 multiple choice national five answers here. These are not the official SQA answers, so don't use them to calculate your mark. These are just my guesses. Right, let's have a look. Atomic number of a metal. 45 is rhodium. It's on the left-hand side of the periodic table, so the answer is C. Number two, an atom is neutral because it has equal numbers of negatives and positive. That's electrons and protons, so that's B. Number three, when water changes to steam. Now, this is an interesting one. This is not a great question chemically, SQA. If you come back for higher, uh, you'll find out why this is not a great question. But I think the one they're looking for is A, weak forces of attraction between the water molecules are broken. If you're interested, it's because they're not really very weak. But that's okay, come back at a higher and we'll talk about them. I'm assuming that it's weak rather than like full-on covalent bonds they're talking about there. Interesting question. Not great at all. Number four, uh, concentration of a solution changes. You're more adding more solute or more solvent. The solute is the solid, the solvent is the liquid. So if you add more solid, then the concentration has to increase. And if you add more liquid, but then the concentration has to decrease. Number five, angular. The classic angular molecule is water. And the only one that resembles water there is B, sulfur dioxide. Number six, electronegativity. Um, this is problem solving. We've never come across this word here before, so you're going to have to read the question, RTFQ. And it says here, the bigger the difference between the electronegativity values, the more polar, more polar, sorry, the bond is. And we're looking for the most polar bond, so that's the biggest difference. They have been nice enough to put them in order here, which means it must be this and this. Sorry, scratchy pen. So that's an OH bond. Um, which line shows what would happen if you electrolyzed copper chloride? You're going to make copper and you're going to make chlorine gas. Copper starts off as 2 plus and chloride start off as 1 minus. So these will be attracted to the positive electrode, so you're going to get a gas forming. And these will be attracted to the negative and you're going to form your solid copper. So it's A. 8. A salt, a sneaky question this one. Because metal oxide, everybody's going to remember, oh yeah, that's a base, I need a better pen. This one, you're tempted to perhaps put it because you see nitrate. However, hydrogen nitrate is actually nitric acid. I'm going to get a better pen. Excuse me. Okay, where were we? Yeah, that's nitric acid. So that's definitely not the answer. Sneaky question. Sodium hydroxide, metal hydroxide, that's a base as well. This one here is a salt of ethanoic acid. So it's a salt of a carboxylic acid. Number nine, ammonia is the only gas we know that forms an alkali, so therefore the pH has got to be more than 7, so it's got to be D. Number 10. This is an interesting one. It's quite a sneaky one, this one. We've got gas X, it's being burned. It's coming through this, we've got an ice bath, so that will cool that, so this test tube down here to zero Celsius. And last of all, we've got it bubbling through lime water. Now, lime water tests for carbon dioxide. And it says here, when we burned gas X, we got a colourless liquid in here. Not sure what that would be. Um, and there was no change in the lime water. That means you're not making CO2 when you burn gas X, which means it definitely can't be methane, can't be carbon dioxide, can't be ethane either for the same reason as that one. So therefore, you're sort of left with hydrogen as the answer. And of course, if you burn hydrogen, you'll make hydrogen oxide, which is otherwise known as water, which is what's condensed. That's your colourless liquid there. Number 13, problem solving. We've never heard of these, never heard of these alkanons. So what I did was, uh, I pretend I don't know what they are. I would have constructed the formula for a couple of them, see which one it fits, and it fits CnH2n with an O. So the answer is B. 14, um, sort problem solving again, a cycloalkane. I just started with the smallest cycloalkane, worked out what the GFM, gram formula mass was. Three twelves are 36, plus six is 42. Metallic bonding it always involves delocalized electrons, so we can chuck these two answers. Uh, the only question is, is it positive ions or negative ions? Well, since the electrons themselves are negatively charged, negative ions are not going to stick to these, so it's positive ions. Number 16. Uh, problem solving again. Some nice problem solving questions here. I like these questions. Metals used to make aircrafts of densities of less than 3 grams per centimeter cubed. 
So uh, I looked at these and these are too dense, so I threw them out. The metals have to withstand temperatures of up to 600 Celsius. So metal A melts at 98. That is definitely out. If I remember correctly, that's actually sodium. This is probably aluminium. Um, so, but anyway, there's a mar because it melts above 600 and it's a density of less than three. So that's the answer. Number 17. Which of these metals can be extracted by electrolysis and forms an oxide that's insoluble in water? Well, copper and lead can be extracted by reacting reaction with um, carbon. So they are thrown out. It says only be extracted by electrolysis. So that's aluminium, calcium. But calcium oxide, if you check the data book, you find it is soluble in water. So the answer is A, aluminium. <laughs> I've just realised I have actually skipped over a page. Uh, we'll come back to them. Sorry about that. Skipped over two pages by mistake. Number 18. Let's finish this page first. Electron flow in the cell. They're trying to catch you out here because electrons do not flow through the electrolyte. Only ions move in the electrolyte. So they, f they being the electrons, uh, flow through the wires and they flow from the higher metal, which is aluminium, to the lower metal. So the answer is D. And number 19, uh, are they testing the same thing twice here? Uh, highest voltage will be the furthest, no, not quite the same thing. No, fair enough. That was direction of flow. This is the size of the voltage. So you want the one, the metal here that's furthest away from magnesium and it will produce the highest voltage. The answer to that is lead. Let me just find the middle questions on the organics that I skipped through by mistake because I'm a Muppet. Oh yeah, data book and boiling point. I never actually did this one. Let me just check for you. Melting boiling points of selected compounds. We've got butane here. It's the boiling point we care about. So butane boils at minus one. This is butene, butonene to be exact. Butonene boils at minus six. So minus one, minus six. This is butanoic acid, my least favorite chemical in the whole world. It boils at 164. I suspect that'll be the right answer, but let's just check this. This is butan two all. Boils at 100 Celsius. Uh, highest, yes it is. So that's the answer. Number 12, sort of problem solving. Bit tricky this one. Decolorizes bromine solution. So we're looking for a carbon-carbon double bond, but is also acidic. So we're also looking for the carboxylic acid group. So two functional groups in one. And the only molecule here that's got two functional groups in one is D. Right, let's go back to where I should have been which is here, here we go. 20 is a redox question. The, the reduction and the oxidation both contain two electrons, so we don't need to do any multiplying, we just need to mash everything together. And you're tempted to put the first answer here, which is why I put a ghost ring around about it, because uh, everything's been fine, except, of course, that's got the electrons there and there. Nope. If you read further down, you come across this one, which is exactly the same without the electrons, though. So that's what we want. 21, polymers. There is the repeating unit. Scrub these bonds away, pop a double bond here, um, and you end up with the answers. Now, these two answers, I instantly threw it because I've only got a single bond in the middle of the molecule, which leaves you with these two. And of course, in best SQA tradition, they've taken this repeating unit and they've flipped it round the other way. So this carbon here is this carbon here, but the answer is still A. 22. Oswald process. Straightforward memory, basically. If you were in my class, you go up one letter in the alphabet, you get to P, and that tells you the catalyst, which is platinum. So I've thrown out the two irons. And the other part of memory is just remembering that you make nitric acid for the Oswald process. Um, so the answer is B. Trick question here, comparing half-lives. Half-lives never change. They're always the same. For a given a radioisotope, anyway then it's always the same. 24, medical use of a radioisotope. If it's punching out through the skin, then alpha doesn't even make it through paper, never mind through human skin, so we can scratch the two alphas. Beta will make it through your skin, and you don't really want this isotope hanging about in your blood for the next 10 years, so you want a short-ish half-life. Shouldn't be too short, of course, otherwise it will disappear before you can measure it. Not, perhaps not a great question. Maybe they should have given numbers to that. Actually, SQA, maybe you should have given numbers. If I was writing this question, I would have said like 10 years for a long half-life 
and say one hour for a short half-life, not microseconds, which you can also get for half-lives. Stop complaining, hey, and finish the paper. 25 minutes, it's 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide and 100 ml margarine cylinder. Yeah, it's okay for accuracy, but if you want a more accurate piece of equipment, you're talking about using a pipette. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.